Anti-gravity have just revolutionized the drone industry with this little guy. This is the A1. And it's like every other drone on the surface, except we don't have a gimbal and camera on the front. We actually have a camera on the top and a camera on the bottom. Yes, this is a 360 drone, and we're here at Webb Institute to see what it's all about. There is a lot to talk about with the A1, but straight away, the video capabilities, we have 8K 30 frames per second. And because this is a 360 drone, we can reframe after the fact and get crazy dynamic shots, when in reality, we're just flying in a straight line. I mean, look at this shot right here. It looks like I'm doing this crazy camera movement, but I'm literally flying in a straight line and then reframing in post-production. And that's thanks to this remote, the grip motion control as anti-gravity are calling it. And basically this makes this the point and shoot or point and fly of drones. So you turn it on, you point the remote where you want to fly, you squeeze the trigger and the drone goes that way. It's really that simple. And as this is a 360 drone, we're going to need to see all of our environment. So you do have to wear kind of VR goggles and they are kind of crazy looking, but I guess in a good way. Um, and this eyepiece on the right, actually, or the left, depending on where you're looking at it, is actually a screen. So when you're flying, your friends can see what you're seeing through the goggles, which makes FPV droning kind of a shared experience for the first time, which is really cool. And we do have the battery here connected to the goggles, which you do have to wear around your neck because the cable isn't that long. I would have loved for it to be a little bit longer just to put in my pocket, but what can you do? So this looks a little ridiculous, but I'm gonna kind of talk you through the menu screen so you can see what I'm seeing. And when you turn it on, you're greeted with the equivalent of a 200 inch screen. And I was gonna talk about this later, but because it's really cold out here and I've just put this on, um, the glasses are fogged up, but we actually have a defogging function. So I'm gonna press that now. And then the internal fan boots on at maximum wind power, and then it kind of cleans up the glass so you have clear vision. So you'll never go without um, you'll never get blinded by the fog in here. So that is fresh, turn it off, and it goes off. It's really cool. So you can also adjust the eyepieces so you can see the screen what you want. So we have diopters from plus 2D to minus 5D if you wear glasses and that fits your prescription. You can wear these without your glasses. I do not have that prescription, so I switched to contact lenses today, but you kind of twist these knobs on the bottom to make sure that they are in focus. And that's perfect. And you can also move these from left to right to get the eyepieces perfect so you don't get any double vision, which is awesome. So very, very accessible for a lot of people, which I love. Unfortunately, I don't fit to that category, but contact lenses for the win. So once you're all set up and you can see everything, you're greeted with this menu and you have everything that you need to control from here. So we have from all of like the camera parameter settings and things like that to the outer display. And then down on the bottom, you can go into different menus and you use the remote like a cursor. So I want to change the camera settings. I just point to that, click the trigger, and then we have SD card slot, storage management, all that kind of stuff. The drone's not on right now, so I can't see any of this, but you can change all your safety settings, your flight control, what, how aggressive you want each mode to be. Really awesome. So you can also change the, um, the view. So from immersion, which gives you more of a screen, but you get a little bit of stuttering in the video playback uh, or a smaller view so you can see, so you get smoother playback when you're flying. I have it in the immersion view right now because I just love having this big screen. It's really cool. Um, but we are all set to fly. So I'm going to power on the drone and let's get flying. So now we turn the drone on and it's really cool. I can see Pat filming right there. You can see me if I turn around a little bit, it's really trippy. So we have on the remote to take off, we have this little slider button. Uh, ensure that the surroundings area is clear. I'm gonna push the slider up twice. The motors have started, and then we push it up again, hold it, and we are away. Wow. Okay, so we are now up in the air. So when we're looking at where we're flying, you obviously have an unobstructed view of 360, and you have this little, like, hexagon shape of where the drone is flying. So, but say I'm looking off to the right, but I wanna fly left a picture in picture then comes in of where you're pointing the remote. So you can see where the drone is flying and it's really not that distracting. It just gives you a bit more confidence that you know you're not gonna crash into anything. And it's just an added safety feature that also, it just makes it really easy to navigate this. And what on an other drone would possibly take two or three people to operate with like a bunch of different screens. 
you now just have one person doing this. And while you're flying, you can also be at ease knowing that the A1 has obstacle avoidance sensors. Now, most of these are at the front of the drone, but because it's a 360 drone, you're pretty much gonna be flying straight the whole time. There's no need to be doing a sideways or backwards movement because you can just fly straight and then reframe it to look like it's going sideways or backwards after the fact. So you can fly straight and be safe and still get those dynamic movements that you want in post. And we've all done it, but if you forget an SD card, do not worry because there is 30 gigabytes of internal storage. Now that's not gonna get you a ton of footage, but you can get a few and that is better than nothing at all and wasting your day. And I put the goggles back on because one last thing, I really, really appreciate that anti-gravity you've done. When you're trying to look around in the real world, taking your goggles off when flying a drone can be super annoying. But if I double tap this button, I get a black and white image of the real world, a nice little pass through video. It's pretty accurate, you know, you kind of see what you do on your controller, things like that. But if I want to give a pat high five right now, oh, it's better than, <laughs> better than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, it's awesome. And you can kind of just get a bearing of your surroundings, know that you're not going to fall over or run into anything. Just a nice little safety feature. and It's just cool to have. So it's a really simple controller, it's nice and ergonomic, it feels really good in the hand and it's also really nice and lightweight, a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. So really impressed with this and it just kind of fits perfectly. And you can operate this with gloves, which on a day like today, I'm really happy we can do that. Uh, a few buttons that we'll just run through quickly. This big red one, you press this once and this is the I'm panicked, I'm scared. You press this and the drone will just hover in place so you're not going to crash into anything you just press that and the drone will stay in place which is great you press it twice and it will return to home we have the slider here which takes the drone off and lands it record take photo button and then this dial is if you are kind of set in place with the drone but you want to kind of spin it and look around then we've got a few custom buttons and then the mode switch really ergonomic feels great in the hand it's also very light love this remote it's really intuitive and even on my first flight, I felt confident that I could do some kind of fun movements with this because again, we're reframing after the fact. So great remote from this. In terms of video specs, we have 8K 30 frames per second and then 4K 100 in slow motion. And then we have a bunch of photo modes that do shoot raw photos. Now we don't have any log video profile shootings. We just have normal color profile, but we do have H.265. But this is the first iteration of a drone of this kind, so we'll let them off there for no log shooting. So one thing that's really genius about the A1 is because we've got a 360 camera and we have a camera on the bottom, if it's to land like a regular drone, this lens is gonna get all scratched up and become unusable. So they actually have a automated landing gear that pops up and then it retracts when you take off, um, which is really cool and just a nice little thing. And always make sure you have these set down when you're about to take off. Uh, but for whatever reason, see, you do scratch up the lenses. Do not worry, you don't have to get a new drone. You can actually take these lenses off and replace them. So much more cost effective than buying a whole new drone because as you know, with 360 cameras of the past, as soon as you got a scratch on the lens, they were unusable and you had to buy a whole new one. Not the case with the A1, which is a really nice touch from anti-gravity. So we're gonna test out a few things here. We've got this grand entranceway over to the main building of Web Institute. So first off, we're going to do a shot passing through the gate here. It's going to test the obstacle avoidance, see what we do there. I'm going to screen record the whole thing so you see what I see. And then we're going to try a few Sky Genie shots, a few smart features. I'm just going to see what we can get with the A1. So we're going to fly directly through. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a, a reveal of the location behind us. And literally all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point this forward and when I wanna fly up, I'm literally gonna point up and that's all I have to do. And I can reframe in post and let's give it a try. So when you're flying, you have two modes that you can choose to view the world in. So we have free motion, where you kind of can look around and see the world around you in 360, or you have FPV mode to give you that more single lens and kind of, you'll only see where the camera is kind of pointed. 
but I'm not really sure why you'd want to use that unless you turn on the virtual cockpit. So this is definitely a fun little feature that you kind of put in just to have a little play around. It is kind of funny. So when you do this, you can choose a character, either like a broomstick, a dragon, or a kind of um, spaceship. And then it's like an AR character comes in to the goggles and then you're like flying around on the character that you've chosen. It's just a little bit of fun, but I'm gonna do the same shot I just did of kind of low and reveal, but I'm gonna put dragon or spaceship. I'll go with dragon. Okay, so to do this, I'm gonna first set it up. So let me screen record so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're back in the virtual cockpit. We've got our trusty dragon. It's like something like Game of Thrones. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but with an AR dragon. So we have the horizon there, so it shows you how much the drone is fighting against the wind. And we're gonna go up. And there we go. This is really cool. Flying up. And again, this is definitely just like a fun little feature, but what a fun little feature to have. And then I'll have them, because we're on a dragon and they're a little bit unpredictable, we're not gonna go down straight to the center. Let's go to the right a little bit. Strong winds, but they can fight it. So we're gonna try deep track now, which is one of the smart features, which is essentially tracking your subject and you can kind of do different movements with it and it keeps the subject exactly where you want in the frame. Okay, so we're gonna have a shot of the drone tracking pad and we're gonna use deep track to do so. So let's go into the menu button and we're gonna click deep track. And now I'm gonna use the C1 button to drag a box around Pat there. There we go. So, and then we're gonna, we're gonna move that so it tracks Pat from the rear. Pat, if you could turn around for me. And then we're gonna track Pat from the rear and that is locked in. So I'm gonna press the record button. Awesome, there we go. And it is locked onto Pat through the thing. I'm not touching any of the controllers. I'm just letting the drone do the work. And this is sick. If I want to go a little bit higher. We've still got Pat. But my favorite one and favorite name of all the smart features is Sky Genie. Now this is a bunch of shots that are already pre-programmed, so you don't have to do anything, you just put go, and then the drone will do all the work for you. So this is basically, you're guaranteed to get a good shot out of these. So if you're in a pinch and you wanna get a few different dynamic movements, definitely try a bit of Sky Genie. So now we're gonna try an anti-gravity line, it's called, of the Sky Genie one. So this basically, it'll fly over the um, building, and it's gonna do like a 180 turn, but obviously we're just literally flying in a straight line. We are not doing that at all. All right, so I'm just checking. I know I look ridiculous right now, but I'm just checking to see if I'm in the center of the road, which it looks like I am. We're gonna re-select the building. And then it shows you in the goggles, what, what I'm seeing right now is what the finished product will look like. So you can't look around at your surroundings in this. Ooh, that's really cool. So that's kind of all things anti-gravity A1 and it's truly the crazy experience I've had with the drone in a long time and I really, as a first generation product, I'm excited to see where they go with this and thinking into the future, maybe five, 10 years down the line, what people will be able to do with this kind of product in the field. It's really exciting to think about and I can't wait to see what people come up with when they're using the anti-gravity A1 in the field. Second of all, thanks to Web Institute, truly an amazing place. I'm so happy we got to shoot here and it was really windy and a little bit cold, but I'm still really happy with the shots that we got. Um, but let me know what you think of the footage of the anti-gravity A1. Do you have any questions about it? Are you looking to get one? What do you think of the footage? All of those questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below. But in the meantime, I've been Matt. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.